You alright Wolf of Wolfettes? Um, as you can see from the title of this video, I am proud. I am super, super proud of myself. Now, that might not seem like much to some people, but to me, it's a big deal because I have never, ever, ever in my entire life felt proud of myself, you know? Never. Actually, I tell a lie. The only time I've ever felt proud of myself was when I asked Samantha to marry me in 2012 because for some reason I convinced myself back then that she was going to say no. I don't know why I convinced myself that, but I really thought she was going to say no. So when she turned around and said yes, I was filled with so much pride, you know, knowing that that beautiful, amazing woman wanted to marry me, you know. So it filled me with a lot of pride, but other than that, I have never ever felt proud of myself until now. So in this video, I'm going to let you guys and girls know what I've been up to. You know, I'm not sure how long this video is going to be. It might be another long one. But I'm going to let you guys and girls know what I'm proud of and what I've been up to, you know. Now, before we get into this video, there's two things I want to say. The first thing is, I am going to get very emotional in this video. For two reasons. For one... I am super proud of myself and I have achieved things that I never ever thought I would achieve. I have fixed things in my brain that I never ever thought I would fix. And I have done things that I thought I would never ever be capable of doing. So there will be some tears of just relief, you know, some tears of pride, you know, tears of just being happy with yourself, you know, just tears of joy, you know. So uh, there will, I will get emotional in this video. And the second reason is, obviously, um, me and Samantha still aren't together. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't spoken to her in two weeks. That's been my decision, just because I just want to give her, I just want to give her space. I just want to give her time to really, really think, you know. Because, you know, I... I I don't want this to be a permanent thing, but I also don't want to seem like I'm desperate. So I've just took a step back and I've been focusing on myself, but I'm really, really, really missing her. You know, every day not texting has been a nightmare, you know, because I just want to text her. I want to remind her all the time that I love her. I don't want her to think I've given up because I sure as hell have not given up on her. I will never give up on Samantha. That is a promise. I swear that on my life, I will never give up on Samantha, you know. I will never give up on her. But I'm missing her very much at the moment. And when I talk about her in this video, because there will be certain things where I mention her, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's going to hurt. And it will probably bring me to tears. So that's just a warning. This is going to be an emotional video. And I'm not going to hold anything back because bottling up emotions is what got me into this mess in the first place, you know. And we don't want to have a relapse, do we? So... I'll be letting out anything that's in my mind. Any feelings, emotions will be coming out, you know. And the second thing I want to say is thank you. A massive thank you. These last three months have been absolute agony. You have no idea. You know, my mind has been going wild. You know, I've had days where I have just wanted to end it all. I've had days where I feel like I'm just going to drive myself insane, you know. But you guys and girls have been there for me every step of the way, you know? And it has been really, really humbling. I always thought I was alone, you know? And I thought I was alone because I always tried to keep myself alone. Because I've always had an issue with people and stuff, I've always kept myself alone, you know? I've tried to avoid people. So for that reason, I always felt I was alone. My own fault, it was my own fault, you know, I did it to myself. The only person I was ever comfortable with was Samantha, so I did keep myself alone, you know. So seeing all of these people reach out to me was, uh, it, it felt very, very, very good, you know. So a massive thank you to my family, a massive thank you to my friends, my subscribers on YouTube, the PlayStation community, random strangers that have reached out to me, even the guy that did my passport interview. 
he even gave me a few words of wisdom because uh, I sort of I sort of started crying. When I, I started crying at my passport interview because they ask you a lot of questions, you know. And he asked me, he asked me about Samantha, and then obviously I had to mention that we're not together, and then you know, it caused uh, yeah, it caused it caused uh, a few tears, you know. He gave me a few words of wisdom. And uh, the biggest thank you will be to my counsellor, Amy, who, thanks to her, I am actually becoming a brand new man, you know? A brand new man. A brand new man. And now I actually feel proud of myself. So yeah, I just wanted to get those two things out of the way. So now we get on to the point of the video. Me being proud of myself and what I've been up to. Nah. On the 20th of July, I took my mum, dad, sister and Samantha into the living room, told them all to sit down and I told them all that I was going to go and seek help. I was going to go around to the doctors, I was going to talk about how I was feeling and I was going to try and get some sort of counselling or therapy organised so I could finally face my demons from the past. Now, nah, they were all very proud of me because they know the kinds of things I've been bottling up for years. And that's the problem. They don't know everything. Even Samantha doesn't know everything, you know. There was a lot of stuff I bottled up in my head that was really, really, really affecting me and causing me to do things that just caused problems, especially in my relationship with Samantha, you know. So, they were very proud of me. Now, obviously, as you all know, I went to the doctor's. I was told that I had pretty bad depression. I was given antidepressants, you know. Things didn't get better. I never got my counselling appointment because the waiting list is humongous. I still don't have the counselling appointment, actually. You know, I still don't have the counselling appointment. And it's December now and I rung up for a uh, assessment in August and I still don't have the appointment. But things went crazy, you know. I started seeking help. Everything just got out of hand, you know. And then a big spanner was thrown in the works and Samantha left me. Now obviously Samantha left me because she, she I, I was affecting her mentally as well, you know. We were both just arguing a lot, you know. It was just a lot of arguments and a lot of really crappy things were going on, you know. She needed a break, you know. She needed to have some time on her own, you know. Which is why at the moment I'm trying my best not to message her, you know. I've made it very clear to her how I feel about her. She knows I'm never going to give up on her. So at the moment, I'm just trying to give her some space, you know, but it's just really hard because I fucking miss her so much, you know. But Samantha left me and I I was ready to quit, you know. I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to bother doing this, you know, because even though I was seeking help for myself because I was sick and tired of hating myself, sick and tired of feeling like a failure, sick and tired of every single bloody day beating myself up, you know. Even though all of that stuff was affecting me, I was also doing this for Samantha. And the fact that she had gone, I was like, you know what, I ain't even going to bother. I ain't even going to put myself through this, you know. But then after being on my own for a couple of weeks and Samantha not being with me, I started thinking long and hard. And I was like, you know what, I am still going to do this. And instead of waiting for the NHS appointment, I'm going to start private counselling, you know, where you pay, and that way I could start soon. So I, I rung Samantha, or I, I texted her, I think I might have texted her, and I asked her if I could see her on the 21st of September. And uh, she agreed, she agreed to see me. At that point, we'd only been broken up for a week. Before that, it was a break, but we'd only been broken up for a week. And I, I sat next to Samantha, I held her beautiful hands, and I looked her in her beautiful eyes, you know. Samantha has got some gorgeous eyes. You know, I can't, I can't even put into words how much I miss looking into her eyes, you know. But I looked her in the eyes and I promised her a bunch of things, you know. I promised her a bunch of things I was going to do. And most importantly, I told her I was going to do private counselling and I was going to fix myself. And I promised her that the next time that she saw me, if she ever does see me again, I was going to be a brand new man, you know. And that is the thing that has inspired me throughout the whole of this journey, you know. Obviously, yeah. I wanted to do this for myself. But when I make a promise to somebody I love with all my heart, I'm going to keep it. I've kept every promise I ever made to her. 
you know, and that is why I'm so proud of myself, you know, because even though she went, even though I had every reason to give up, I didn't, I carried on. So I started doing the counselling with Amy on the 26th of September. Now, this is all of the stuff that I'm proud of. Now, these are the five things that have been plaguing me. And some of these things I didn't even know. Like, I never knew I had any mental health issues, you know. I only know this now because the doctor has told me and the counsellor has told me. So, I've got pretty bad anxiety. Pretty bad depression. A lot of self-hatred. I always feel like a failure. And I've got a lot of anger issues. Now, those are the five things I've been working on the most. Now, when I first started counselling, the first thing I said to Amy was... I uh, I don't talk, I don't open up to anybody, so I'm not really going to say much, you know, because I just wanted to let her know that I'm probably not going to say much, you know, in the first session. Well, I lied, I really lied, you know, because I did, I let everything out, I let everything out that day, I went crazy, I let everything out, you know, I talked so much, for 50 minutes I just wouldn't stop talking. You know, and I told her everything. And throughout every single session, I've done 11 sessions of counselling now. Every session I've just become more and more better at talking, you know. And I've let everything out, everything, you know. And every time we've been setting goals, you know, and things I need to work on, I have smashed every single one of them, you know. And the thing I've been working on the most is the anxiety. So uh, this is what I'm going to talk about, you know. I'm going to talk about each of the issues and what I've been doing to fix them. You know, I'm not going to talk about why the issues exist because they are very private and very personal, you know. So I'm not going to tell you why these things exist. You know, you already know some of the reasons like bullying and stuff, but there are some very serious issues, you know. And uh, I, I can't really be talking about them on the internet, you know. But anxiety. What I've been doing to fix this. Talk to people. Force myself to talk to people. That's the number one thing that has been helping with my anxiety. I have spoken to more people in these last three months than I have my entire life. You know? I've spoken to more people in just three months than in 27 years. It is ridiculous, you know? And I, not just on, like, on the internet. I mean like face-to-face -face talking to people, you know? I've not held anything back, you know? I've been talking to loads of people. You know, and what I thought was the best way for me to deal with this anxiety was with the school I work in. Now, as you all know, the school I work in is where I, the place that pretty much made me how I am. You know, it's the place that broke my mind, the place that made me anxious, the place that ultimately caused the depression. You know, it's the place where all of the anger and self hatred came from, you know. So I thought, what better place? for me to start sorting myself out. So I started going into work 45 minutes earlier than I would normally go to work. Because normally I would go to work at six o'clock in the evening and I would be there to half 10 at night and there would be nobody in the school, you know? So I would just constantly be in there and I would be just, just stewing in all of the anger, you know? Rem remembering all of the crap that happened when I was there. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna start going in earlier and I'm gonna start talking to the teachers. Because the teachers that are in the school are not the same teachers that are there when I was there, you know. All of the teachers that were there when I was there, they've all left, retired, been fired, all that usual stuff. There's only one teacher that's still there from when I was a kid. And I'm going to talk about her in a minute. I'll tell you what, I've been doing I've been doing a lot of good shit. I've been doing a lot of good shit, you know. I've been, I've been making people happy everywhere. I've been making people happy everywhere. But yeah, on the, I started going in 45 minutes earlier and I started talking to the teachers, you know. Every day I'd go in there because I'm a cleaner, you know, I'd be cleaning stuff, you know, and the teachers would start talking to me, you know. It started off with a couple of them just saying hello, you know, because most of them didn't even know me because they'd never seen me because I used to work early in the morning and then I was working late at night where they never saw me. So most of them didn't know me, you know, and I started talking to them, you know, and forcing myself to. Literally, teachers are the thing I hate. I hated teachers because teachers are the thing ultimately that destroyed me, you know. I'm not saying all teachers are bad, but for me they were. I hated them. I hated them. They destroyed me. They ruined my life, you know. So me going into work early, forcing myself to talk to, talk to teachers is amazing, you know. 
that is the biggest amount of pride I've ever felt, you know? Going in there and even starting conversations, you know? I would walk in there and make jokes about how messy the rooms are, you know? I still do it now, you know? I'm doing it all the time. I always go in early now, you know? And they're always talking to me, you know? And I, one time I went in, I went in early, and two of the teachers were playing crash, crash team racing. Crash team racing, they had a telly in the middle of the class, I think it was something to do with they were going to be playing it with the kids or something. For us. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what was going on. But yeah, they were playing crash team racing, you know. And I was cleaning and I was watching them. And oh my God, they cannot play crash team racing, you know. Unfortunately, on that day, I was I was really upset. I was having a really bad day. So I didn't end up speaking to them. But I, I was, I was, it was on the tip of my tongue to be like, you know what? Give me that controller. I'll show you how to play, you know. But, you know, it, it was one of the rough days, you know. But yeah been forcing myself to go in early and talk to the teachers, which is a massive step for me, you know? Now, uh, another thing that I've done is there is a teacher named Sue. And she is the only teacher in my life that I have ever liked. She is the only teacher I have ever liked, you know? And she was there. She's still there in the school, you know? She used to be I think she used to be a TA or might have been part of Senko or something, but I used to do like this uh, extra English lesson with her, you know, but she was the only teacher I ever liked, you know, and for years I've wanted to tell her that she was an amazing teacher, you know, but I couldn't because of the anxiety, you know, I was too scared to do it, I was too scared to talk to her, I was also too frustrated and angry to be able to speak to any teacher, even the one I liked, you know, and be able to say anything nice to them was a big no-no, you know, so uh, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to make her feel happy, I'm going to make her die, you know, I am going to finally tell her just about what an amazing teacher she was, you know. So I went up to her. I went past her office about five, six, seven, eight times, you know, back and forth, shitting myself because I thought I ain't going to be able to do this. You know, but eventually I went in there and I was like, hi, miss, have you, are you free for a quick chat, you know. And uh, at the time, she, she's also, when I spoke to her, at the time, she was going through a rough time. She, uh, her dad was in hospital because he's really old. And uh, her house had also been broken into, you know. I wanted to do this chat regardless of those things, but because uh, I knew she was going through a rough time, I was even more inclined to do it, you know. But it, a lot, she wasn't in a lot, you know. It was, I think I was waiting to talk to her for about three weeks because she weren't in. She was always leaving earlier than when I got into work. But eventually I finally got the balls and I went and I spoke to her, you know. And I told her, I was like, you know what? You were the only teacher in my childhood that made my life worth living. You were the only teacher that ever showed me any kind of value, any kind of worth. You were the only teacher that ever showed me that you cared. You were the only reason in school, when I was in, uh, when I was actually in school as a kid, that I would come to school and feel any kind of happiness, you know? And then I told her a little bit about what I was doing, you know, and I told her a bit about that I was doing counseling. I told her a bit about me and Samantha, you know, but. I said a lot of nice stuff to her, you know, and uh, I brought her to tears, you know. I brought her to tears of joy, which uh, it was, it was, yeah, I got teary too because I talked about Samantha and I can't talk about her without crying, you know, and then, you know, I made her feel special, you know. And I was proud of myself, you know. Going into work early, talking to teachers, which is like the biggest enemy of my brain, teachers, you know. Finding that one teacher I always liked, you know, and having the courage to finally walk up to her and tell her about what an amazing teacher she was, you know. And I did. I did it, you know. And I was super proud of myself, you know. And it's the same thing with the anxiety, you know. Even my family members, you know. I've been talking to my family members, you know. Especially my cousins. I've been talking to them a lot, you know. And I've been letting them know, you know. I've been telling them my true feelings, you know. Instead of being the same angry David that I've always been, I've been telling them, you know. I've been saying, you know, if you need help, you know, I'm there for you, you know, and I've been giving them some advice as well. I've been talking to just so many people, you know, so I've been taking on this anxiety head on, you know, and I've reached a point where I can talk to anybody, you know, like literally anybody. Like I used to be scared of seeing, like, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, the wolf mask, I used to wear that wolf mask because I was scared of showing my face because I didn't want anyone to talk to me. So there you go. Everybody thought I wore the mask because, you know, it was like a cool little thing. And it was, it was, it was supposed to be a cool, quirky thing for my channel. But ultimately, I wore it because of my anxiety. 
I didn't want you guys and girls to know who I was. So if you ever saw me in the street, I didn't want to have anyone talk to me. Now, if any of you guys and girls talk to me, I'm fine. There's not an ounce of fear in me of talking to people now. Not an ounce of fear, you know? And that is something I am super proud of, you know? Being able to talk to anybody without any fear, you know? And this will, if this is a sank that will be very important if Samantha ever does give me another chance, you know? Because that was something that caused a lot of problems where I would always, you know, I wouldn't want to go to any social gatherings, you know? I wouldn't want to go out clubbing. I wouldn't want to do anything like that, parties, because I was so scared of people. I just, I, I didn't feel comfortable talking to them or being around them. But now, it's a completely different ball game, you know? So I did it, you know? That's the thing I've been working on very hard is the anxiety. The depression, the depression is something that I have been always working on, you know, because I've probably had the depression since I left school. So that's something I've been working on for years, you know, and that's something that hasn't ever beaten me, you know. It has been very rough lately, you know. There have been there has been days where it is getting really hard, you know, because the thing that always helped me with my depression was Samantha, you know. You know, because she was always the driving force that made me want to do everything that I did, you know. When I knew I was just, I was working on it for her, you know. And I was going to make our life better, you know. It was always a driving force, you know. So the fact that she has been gone has made it really difficult for me, you know. Really difficult. But I've just had to do it myself, you know. And that's what she wants me to do. That's what Samantha has told me to do several times. Focus on yourself. Do it for yourself. And I am doing stuff for myself, you know. She never asked me to do cancelling. I chose to do it, you know. She never asked me to do it. But yeah, I've uh, I've been working on the depression, but it's been very hard, you know, very hard lately. That's probably been the only thing that I haven't made a humongous amount of progress on, you know. And obviously, I don't take the antidepressants, so it's all it's all about willpower, you know. At the moment, I've not really got anything to help me. I have been doing a lot more uh, physical exercising. I've been doing my weights again. I've been running again. I've been doing a lot of push-ups and sit-ups. I've been working out a lot again, so that's been helping out a lot. So um, that's been helping with the depression a bit, but yeah, it's still there, and it still really is trying to ruin my day, you know? Now, uh, the anger. I don't feel any kind of anger whatsoever. You know, I do not feel angry. It has got It's gotten to the point where... I feel freezing cold all the time, you know? Because I spent so much of my life being so angry and pissed off with everything, I was always boiling hot, you know? And now that I'm not angry anymore, I feel pretty chill. It's made me feel chilly, you know? I guess that's what happens when you become chill, you get chilly. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've just, I just feel, I feel chill, you know? I don't, I mean, I, the sadness is obviously huge, but I, I feel chill. You know, I don't feel angry anymore. You know, it's like I fight. I think it's because I've been going into the school and facing my demons in there. Because all of my issues came from that place, you know. There are other things that have happened, you know, that weren't involved in the school. But all of my problems came from there, you know. And because I've been facing that place head on, talking to the teachers and doing all of the things that I've done, I think that's the main reason why I've had so much progress so quickly, you know, and why I've become a new man, you know. But yeah, I don't feel angry anymore. You know, there are some things that occasionally will set me off a little bit with rage, but it's very, very rare, you know. It used to be every day. Now it's like maybe once every two, three weeks that I get annoyed, you know. So I've worked on that. I'm just a, I'm just a chill, calm, happier guy. I do actually feel happy with myself, you know. I'm not happy because of, obviously, the situation with me and Samantha, but I'm happy with me you know, with me, you know, and then the self-hatred, the self-hatred and the feeling like a failure, those were the two biggest issues, you know, because the self-hatred and feeling like a failure also mixed in with the anxiety caused a lot of issues and feeling like a failure is probably the most known issue with me because everybody that knows me knows that I always think I'm a failure. They all know it. My family, friends, Samantha well and truly knows that I feel like a failure all the time, you know. She's always telling me, you're not a failure, you're not a failure. She probably got bored of it, you know. But honestly, after everything I've done these last two months, I don't feel like a failure anymore. I no longer feel like a failure, you know. I used to wake up, I used to look at myself in the mirror and I would feel physically sick. I would hate what I saw, you know. 
But when I think about the stuff that I have done, you know, when I think about the stuff that I have achieved, you know, I'm actually a fucking successful guy. You know, I am very successful, you know. Like, yeah, I'm not a CEO of some company. I'm not earning millions of pounds a year. I'm not even earning hundreds of thousands. I'm not even earning tens of thousands, you know. But I have done so many incredible things, you know. I worked, I work in a school where I was mentally destroyed. And I go into that place every single day for the last seven, nearly eight years. And I have cleaned the place. And in fact, I took a second job in July and I go in there even more now, you know. So do you know how much mental fortitude it takes to go into the place where your life was pretty much destroyed and clean it every single day, you know. Do you know how much willpower that takes? That's not something a failure. That's not something a success, uh, a successful person would do. Uh, that's not something. Ah, fuck it. Fuck me, mate. I forgot how to speak English. That is not something that a failure would do. A failure wouldn't do it. They would give up. They would quit. I didn't quit. I still work in there. And I do a fantastic job too. The place is sparkly every day. Fucking shiny, mate. Absolutely shiny. You know, it's spotless. I'm an absolute cleaning machine, you know. An absolute cleaning machine, you know. And yeah, I might be a cleaner, you know. But uh, what you need to remember is I'm a cleaner. But I've managed to save up thousands of pounds towards a home. Obviously, when I look at my bank, I get very upset because all of my plans are now completely fucked up, you know. But I'm a cleaner. Managed to save up thousands of pounds for a deposit for a house, earning practically no money, you know. Another reason why I'm not a failure. I could have took that money and I could have fucked off to the pub, you know. And lately, I've been liking a lot of different ciders. So I could spend a lot of money in a pub very easily, you know. Especially with how sad I've been feeling. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't become an alcoholic, you know, but I didn't, you know. And I'm also a gamer, you know. Also, I was spending money on train tickets, you know. And I was also earning barely any money. But no, I managed to save up thousands of pounds for a deposit on a house, you know. That's not something a failure would do, you know. I've managed to get uh, 4,500 subscribers on YouTube. That's not something a failure would get. A failure would have given up when they, uh, you know, uploaded a few videos and didn't have a million subs, you know. I didn't. I've done this every single day for six years nearly. Yeah, well, not every single day lately because of what's happened, because I've not been able to record. I've just been mentally fucked, you know. But yeah, that's not something a failure would achieve. 4,500 or 600 people, whatever it is, you know. And the thing is, since I've stopped uploading, practically nobody unsubscribed because I earned all of my subscribers through hard work. You know, I didn't just go around spamming, following what was trendy, starting a load of clickbait shit on my channel, you know. Everybody that subscribed to me, subscribed because they liked my personality, they liked how I played games, or they liked some of the other types of videos I do, like T-Wolf and stuff like that, you know. That's not something a failure would achieve, you know. That's what a successful person would get, you know. The PlayStation forums, you know. I haven't been posting on there for a, a couple of months now because I'm just, I, I can't, I can't focus on making articles or creating fun topics, you know, and I've not really been playing any games myself at all. So I've not really been on there. The stats on that place have hit rock bottom, you know, and I know when I go back, the stats will rise up, you know. I'm keeping the forum alive single-handedly, you know, and now that I've gone off of it, it's plummeting, <laughs> you know, because I was always posting on there, keeping it alive for my fellow PlayStation Nation, you know. This is not something... A failure would do, you know. I spent all of those years thinking I was a failure, but I've done so many incredible things. So it feels good to finally fucking look in that motherfucking mirror and be like, you know what, David? You stupid fuck, mate. Why the hell have you called yourself a failure for so many years when all you do is achieve things? Yeah, they're not massive, but you achieve a lot of great things. Even with me and Samantha, a 10-year relationship, I achieved that, you know. And it was long distance throughout a lot of it. Do you know how hard it is to be in a long distance relationship when you love someone and you want to see them? The patience it takes, you know? Also the trust in each other, because you're both far apart. You don't know what each other's doing. You've got to have a lot of trust, you know? Do you know how hard it is to do that? That takes a lot of, a lot of strength, you know? That was a massive success, you know? A massive success, you know? So this is what I'm saying, Wolf Wolf, I've been working on a lot of things 
I've been working on a lot of things and I'm becoming a new man, you know? But most importantly, I've been destroying that anxiety and that's the thing that plagued me the most. And then we've got a couple of other things I've been working on. Obviously, as you all know, I started a, um, I started a second job because I wanted to save up more money so that me and my fiancé could move up to... Oh, I fucking did it now, didn't I? Me and some... Me and Samantha. I still keep calling on my fiance. It's a habit, a very painful habit. But um, yeah, uh, I forgot what I was talking about now. Yeah, I took a second job so that I could get more money. So me and Samantha could have moved up to Yorkshire a lot quicker, you know. And uh, in July, August, September, and October. They did not pay me properly, you know. I kept on having to fill out these timesheets because they would not sort out my contract. In November, I finally decided... Th another reason why I've been destroying my anxiety. Normally, I wouldn't say anything. I'd just leave it until it gets sorted, you know, or I'll try and get someone else to sort it for me. Nope. Had all of the problem with the carer's allowance and the pension and all the stuff that happened. It was her fault. Also, the same woman that didn't sort out my contract. What a surprise. I rung her up. I got her on the old blower. And I told her, I said, Where's the contract? You know, it's been like, what, five months and I still don't have a contract. I still don't know what I'm being paid. I still can't sort out things in my life, you know. And then, and then oh, you know, I was, certainly, you know I, was, I was very annoyed. I was very angry. That was probably the last time I was angry. This was back in October. And I, I proper went for it, you know. And then, uh, yeah, you know, she uh, said, oh, I'll sort it out. I'll sort it out. Sorry, oh, just been busy. No, no, no you, ain't, you ain't been fucking busy. You just haven't done it, you know. But yeah, I, I rung her up. Sorted out, you know, and then she ran me back uh, three, four hours later. And then she's like, okay, so this is the contract. And then she tried putting me on three and a half hours a day. You know, three and a half hours a day. I was on two and a half hours originally, and now I'm doing a second job. So ideally, I should be on about four hours and 45 minutes, if I think about the other cleaner's hours, you know. And she tries putting me on three and a half hours. So they're gonna, uh, they're gonna, they're taking an hour off me, taking five hours off of me a week, you know, so they can save money. Trying to shaft old Beowulf, you know, trying to shaft me. And I was like, nah, 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 I ain't having none of that. And then, uh, yeah, I let rip. I let rip, you know, and then long story short, I'm on four and a half hours now, which is a lot better than what I would have been on, you know. And I'm earning double the money. Earning more money than I thought I'd be earning. So there you go, you know, I sorted that out, you know. Fucking more pride. More proud of myself, you know. Because when I make a promise, you know, I make a promise to people, I keep my motherfucking promise, you know. I made a promise to my mum, dad and sister. I'm going to fix myself. I held my beautiful Samantha. Yes, mine. She'll always be my woman. You know, because like I told you guys and girls, I ain't, I ain't moving on, you know. I'm keeping, I'm keeping my love for Samantha for the rest of my life. You know, if she wants to go off and find an inferior man, then that's up to her, you know. But, you know, I, I'll still love her forever. And I'm not giving up on her. But yeah, I took her by the hands and I promised her. And most importantly, I promised myself that I was going to fix myself. And I did. You know, and I did. Another thing I did, I sorted out my passport. Another thing that I was really reluctant to do because, one, I knew you had to do an interview. And I was shitting myself because of anxiety. I thought, oh shit, I ain't going to be able to sit in front of someone. They're going to ask me questions and I'm not going to know what to say. Even though they're just questions about you. If you can't answer them, then... You're a fucking idiot, ain't ya? You know, the point of the, the point of the interview is so they know that you are you, you know, so you're not just some imposter. So they proper question you about things, you know. But it's questions you can answer really easily, you know. Oh, what's your name, you know? Oh, where do you live? Oh, what kinds of things are in your area, you know? Oh, you know, well, how did you get here today? You know, just, just stuff like that, you know. Very easy questions, you know. But I sorted my passport out, but I was always reluctant to do it because I didn't want to do the interview. And also, I'm terrified of going on a plane. But... You know, I'll go on a plane, you know. After after these last few months, I'll do anything, you know. I'm just, I'm, like I said, I'm chill. I'm chill, you know. I have truly, truly, truly done everything that I promised. But yeah, sorted out my passport. Also sorted out my NHS card. As you guys and girls know, I've got asthma. And because my money has increased, you know, I had to, I have to actually pay for the prescriptions now. So I had to sort out an NHS card where you, uh, you pay, I think it's, uh, I think it's like, oh, I can't remember how much it is now. Maybe £80 or something, £90. But because I've got asthma and I get a bunch of stuff for my asthma, I needed to get it, you know, and it does work out cheaper to get an NHS card. So yeah, I've sorted out a lot of things. So there you go, Wolf Wolfettes.
And all of this stuff that I've sorted out has been since I made the last channel update, you know? And I've been going to counselling every single day. I've been talking to Amy, not every single day, every single Monday. I've been talking to Amy and she's continuously told me, you know? She's told me every time, you know, you are very determined, David. You are one of the most determined people I've ever met. And this is a counsellor saying it, you know? That's why it means something when she says it. Because she meets a lot of people. Obviously, she might just be being nice, but, you know, you know I, I think she's telling the truth because I am determined, you know? Because, like I said, I wanted to become a brand new man for myself. I wanted to be a new man. I didn't want to wake up every day hating myself anymore. I didn't want to feel like a failure anymore, you know? I wanted to wake up and be happy, you know? And even though I'm not happy because I've lost my angel, I am happy with myself. I am comfortable in my own skin. I am confident. I don't think I'm a failure. I sure as hell don't hate myself. The anxiety has been absolutely annihilated. And the whole depression thing is something that I'm having to work on. But there you go, Wolf Morfettes. There you go. I finally opened up, spoke to somebody, and I'm a brand new man. I say I'm a brand new man, I'm not even a brand new man. I'm pretty much the old version of me. This is how I was when I was five. Nothing bothered me when I was five. I loved everybody, I was always happy, you know, I was always hyped for everything, everything excited me, you know. So, you know, there you go. I am proud of myself. I am proud of myself. And nobody's going to take that away from me. Nobody. You know? But yeah. But I have got a message for everybody watching this right now. If you are going through a rough time and you are dealing with some demons, you know, maybe you've had some stuff that's happened in your childhood that's bothering you. Maybe you're just stressed out because you've got, like, you know, debt from a mortgage, you know. Maybe you've lost your job. Who knows, you know. Whatever reason there is, especially if you're a man, because men like to bottle things up. I know that personally, and we don't like to look weak. Make sure you go and talk to someone, you know, because I can tell you right now, if you keep bottling things up and you're in a relationship, actually, this is what I want you to do. If you're watching this video and you're listening to everything I'm saying and you're thinking to yourself, damn, I've actually got a lot of problems that I haven't, I haven't talked about. I want, and you've got a partner, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, husband, wife, doesn't matter, you know, and you're feeling shit, I want you to go up to your partner right now, I want you to give them a 30 minute cuddle because that's all I wanna do right now is I just wanna walk up to Samantha and hold her in my arms for 30 minutes flat and just let her know, let her know. Let her know just what an amazing bloke I have become. But I can't, you know. So I want you guys and girls to go up to your partner, hug them tight, 30 minutes. If they give you a weird, if they give you a weird look, don't stop cuddling them. Keep cuddling them. Cuddle them. Cuddle, cuddle them with every single bit of love in your body, you know. Cuddle them with every single bit of love in your body. And then, if you've got anything that you're keeping to yourself, anything you're bottling up, tell them. Let it out, you know? Because if you bottle it up and you don't let it out, one day you're gonna boil over, you know? The bottle's gonna overflow. And if you reach that point, you know, there is a chance that you'll end up in the same situation as me, where you will lose your partner. And losing Samantha is the biggest mistake of my life. And it is something that is gonna haunt me forever. You know, I, I feel like a brand new man. Yeah, I do. I really do feel like a brand new man. And I am proud of myself. And you, you guys and girls won't understand how proud I am of myself. But I'm always going to have that hole in my heart. You know, and unless I get her back, I haven't given up, you know. I have really not given up, you know. I have not given up. You know, I know that if I get the opportunity to see her in person, you know, and I can sit down in front of her, you know, doesn't matter where, we can go anywhere, I don't care, forest, woods, you know, we can go anywhere, a pub, a club, I don't, well not a club, we won't be able to hear each other, but anywhere, you know, and I get to look her in her beautiful eyes, you know, man, I miss her fucking eyes, I love her eyes, Samantha's eyes are, 
It's the first thing I noticed. It's the first thing I noticed when she sent me the first picture of herself in 2009, you know? I fell in love with her personality. But damn, when I saw those eyes, it was, it was instant, I knew. I knew she was the one. And I still know she's the one, you know? And if I get the chance to see her, Wolf and Wolfettes, she'll fall in love with me again. Because I'm going to let her know everything, you know? I'm going to let her know everything. I haven't given up on Samantha. But yeah, I'm feeling proud of myself. Just make sure you go and hug your partner right now. And if you're bottling anything up, tell your partner and seek help before it's too late. Don't end up in the pain I'm in right now. Because, you know, I'll, I'll give you... I'll give you a quick, I'll give you a quick few uh, examples of how I've been feeling. Especially at the moment, you know. Everything I do at the moment reminds me of Samantha. Everything, you know. No matter how little or how big it is, it reminds me of Samantha. And I, I cry so fucking painfully, you know. This is the kind of crying where... You, you fall to your knees. You physically cannot stand anymore. You fall to your knees, you know? Because it hurts so much, you know? Like, like, like two weeks ago, I woke up in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, it was like three in the morning, you know? For some reason, I felt sad. You know, I, I already knew why I was sad. It was because Samantha's not with me. But for some reason, I woke up in a, in a right mess. You know, I, I, my head wasn't thinking straight. And I woke up and I felt really, really sad, you know. And I thought, fuck me. What's the matter with me then? And I rolled over to hug Samantha. She's not with me anymore, is she? And then obviously my arm hit the bed. Oh my God, did I cry? Did I cry so much? You know? And then I'll, I'll go downstairs, you know, and she's still got stuff in my house that belongs to her, you know, and I see it and it hurts, you know. But I'll go into the back room where I set up her computer and that, you know, so she wasn't confined to my room. And then I see that empty chair where she used to sit and play World of Warcraft, you know. It's, it's, it's horrible. It, it's gut-wrenching. It's, it's heart-wrenching. It is horrible, you know. And uh, Honey... Our rabbit, Honey is still here. Honey is, I made a video of Honey many years ago. Honey, the evil rabbit, you know, and I, I go in there and I stroke Honey, you know. I talk to Honey about Samantha for hours, you know, and I stroke Honey and I cry my eyes out, you know. You know, because I am so, this is, it's very bittersweet because I am very proud of myself and a lot of people are very proud of me, but there is one person that I want to show. You know, I have spoke to Samantha, not very often. I have spoke to her. I did let her know about some stuff, you know. And she has said she's proud of me. And when she said she was proud of me, fuck me, man, was I happy? Because that's what I needed to hear for so long, you know. But, but just because I can't, I haven't been given that opportunity at a second chance. Whether I ever get that opportunity, I don't know. But it's, it's starting to really hurt me, you know. Because she's the one person I want to show the new me to, you know. Because even though I did this for myself... It was mostly for her too. Because I loved her. And I still do. I really love her, you know. And because it's this time of year, it's really painful, you know. Because it's coming up to Christmas, you know. And there's a lot of things that are really making me sad, you know. Like, um, like uh, I, I buy her loads of presents, you know. Because I, I like to make sure she has a good Christmas and she gets all the things she likes, you know. And I always go above and beyond, you know. I pick up the slack of other people for her, you know, and, and I'm not buying the presents because we're not together, you know, and it's kind of like, oh, normally my room would start being filled up with presents now and my door would be knocked on all the time and I'd have deliveries from like America and China because a lot of things I got always seemed to be coming from there. So I started doing, I'd start my shopping in October, so things got here in time, you know, and not doing that is, it's really hurting me, you know, and then, and then you've also got the Black Forest Gatto, Hot chocolate at Costa, if you've never had it, go and try it. It's delicious, you know, I'd be drinking that with her. I can't even set foot in Costa without crying. I haven't been in there since she left. I, I really cannot go in Brewer's Fair. That will kill me, because she introduced me to that amazing place. Fuck me, I love Brewer's Fair. 
you know? And then I, I start thinking about other memories, you know, like before Samantha had a car, uh, I used to meet her at the train station. And then when it got to this time of year, it was cold. There isn't many people around, even when it's like rush hour. Everybody's in their car. Nobody wants to walk because it's cold, you know. And I remember walking up and down the uh, the road all the way to the train station to meet her, you know. And it's really cold. It's like half seven. I would meet her at the station before she had her car, obviously, you know. And I'd see all of the uh, I'd see all of the Christmas lights on, you know. And I'd be proper happy because I'm seeing Samantha after not seeing her for two weeks, and I missed her, you know. These memories, they hurt so bad because I know that it's more than likely going to be the last time I have these memories, you know? Well, I miss her. I truly, truly miss her. You know, I just miss talking to her. I miss knowing what she's up to, you know, how her day has been. I miss talking to her on the phone. I miss saying goodnight to her. I miss everything, you know, and uh, it's getting to that point where, you know, if we don't get back together, I know there's going to there's gonna come a, a time where I have to block her, because if we don't get back together, which seems likely, I'm going to keep trying, but if we don't get back together, I'm going to have to block her. Because if I don't, I'm going to have to witness the day that she meets somebody else. And that is the day where I truly die inside. So, um, yeah, I just miss her. I haven't given up. I just remember this time last year, you know. This time last year was ridiculous. You know, I was so happy this time last year. Like, this time last year, you know, uh, I remember the thing that really keeps making me upset. We was at, Sa we was at South End on Sea, me and Samantha. And uh, I started getting loads of subscribers and I did not know why, you know, it was like I thought something had gone wrong, you know, or maybe someone had given me a shout out, I wasn't sure, you know. And then I realised that one of my videos had gone viral, it was my Crash Bandicoot video, my unboxing video, and it had gone viral and I was getting big subscribers. And I remember we were sitting in Costa, you know, getting Black Forest Gatto, hot chocolates, <laughs> and also a mince pie. It was, uh, it was near the end of November, you know, and we were there and then she sat down. I had this big ass grin on my face and she was like, what? Because I look like a cheeky motherfucker. And she was like, what? And she laughed. And I said, I told her, you know, she was proper excited. She was hyped for me, you know, gave me a hug, gave me a kiss, man. I fucking miss hugging and kissing Samantha too, man. I, I fucking, I miss everything, you know, you know, proper hyped, you know, and I was in a good mood and that's very rare. Because back then, like I said, I've spent so many years just being angry, you know. So when I do get happy, it's a rare sight, you know. But yeah, she was proper hyped for me. She was proper happy for me, you know. And then we were walking around South End on sea. It was cold. There wasn't many people around. It started getting late at night. I think it was a Saturday. And uh, yeah, then I remember going into a clothing shop with her. So she could look at clothes as usual. And then we found this like stand of like jewellery and they had Christmas jewellery. And I remember her buying these four, four um, sets of Christmas earrings. She was going to wear one for each week of December, you know, and it just, I've, I've still got this. I've still got, I've still got the polar bear ones. I've still got the polar bear ones over there. And then I look at them and then it just, it's just, I was so happy last year. And even though I'm happy with what I've achieved, and I am proud of myself, I'm not happy. I feel truly empty. Filled with so much pride. But fucking empty, you know? But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about this because it'll, be, it'll become really depressing. But yeah, there you go, Wolf and Wolfettes. I made a promise that I would fix myself. I made a promise that I would sort my mind out, you know? And this should be an example of you can you can get help and you can get help with your mental health, you know? And talking to someone really does help, you know? Go and watch my last video, watch this one. It'll be they'll they'll still I'm still sad in this video, but you'll see the difference in the things I say about myself in that video compared to what I say about myself in this video. So if you like I said, if you're watching this, you know, please, please talk to somebody before you end up losing someone you love. 
because talking to someone is a lot easier than waking up every day without the person you love. <laughs> so please, if you have any mental health issues or you're bottling up things that are really causing you grief, <laughs> talk to somebody, okay? Please talk to someone, especially your partner. Let them know how you feel, okay? But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Um, the, re I'm going, uh, the reason I was talking about all of those sad memories with me and Samantha was because um, that's why I'm not coming back to YouTube yet. I'm going to try and come back to YouTube early January with gaming videos. And I'm also going to be working on a few big projects. And I'm also going to work on the final T-Wolf video. You know, so I'll be back properly in January. I don't think I'll be able to come back in December because I'm just going to be spending every day crying, you know. At the moment, I'm just a mess. I'm filled with pride. I'm happy, but I'm so unhappy and I'm also so sad. And I really, I really miss her. But yeah, please, if you're, if you're facing demons, you know, and it's affecting your relationship, I want you to go up to your partner right now, give them a massive cuddle. You don't necessarily have to say sorry because nobody should be apologising for mental health issues. But if you want to say sorry like I do all the time, then say sorry, you know, because you still don't want to hurt your, your partner even if it is mental health. You still, you're not intentionally wanting to hurt them so you're still going to be sorry. But go up to them, give them a cuddle and let out your feelings. Especially you blokes out there, please just do it and seek help, you know. Don't end up in the situation I'm in because fuck me, man. I would give my life. I would give my life for one more day with Samantha. One more day, I would give my life. But yeah, thanks for watching, Wolf Morphet. Sorry that this is a long video again. I don't know how well this video has come out. I don't know if I've said everything I want to say. There's probably a lot of things I've done over these last two months that I've not mentioned that I've just forgotten about. But yeah, thanks for watching, Wolf Morphets. Thanks for all of the support. You guys are fucking amazing. You girls are fucking amazing. You know, right, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't give a fuck, mate. I'm gonna give you all a kiss. So yeah, here you go. Mwah, there you go. Have a kiss. I'm a, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit snotty at the moment. So if I've given you all a cold, I do apologize. But yeah, I love you all. You know, I hope you all have a fucking great Christmas, you know? Make sure you, you fucking cuddle the one you love. Because that's all I want to do right now. Cuddle the one you love. You know, have a great fucking Christmas. Make sure you watch lots of YouTube videos. Make sure you subscribe to Tom Wolf, one of my best buddies on this, uh, on this platform. So yeah, thank you everybody for the support. And I will keep improving. I will keep becoming a better man. And then hopefully one day I get to come back here and say, you know what? She's back. But we'll have to see what happens. I won't give up on her. I love her. I truly love her. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you in well, hopefully you enjoyed my progress. Like, share, and join the pack today.